Thank you everyone for checking out the video. Today we learned that classic weapons are coming back to Call of Duty Infinite Warfare and we also learned how we're going to unlock these weapons. So on screen here it says classic weapons are unlocked from classic weapon tokens earned by prestiging. Players get to choose the order of unlock and that's great news because now we know that we don't have to get them out of supply drops or pay for these weapons. All we have to do is play the game and I think that's how it should be. And another side note is that these weren't referred to as permanent unlock tokens, so I feel like we're going to, on top of unlocking something permanently such as a score streak, perk, weapon, or attachment, or a wild card, we're also going to get to choose which classic weapon we want to do, because I don't think they would make it where you have to use the permanent unlock token on a classic weapon if they referred to them as classic weapon tokens. And speaking of classic weapons in Call of Duty, we also learned that we're going to see which ones indeed are coming back in the Infinite Warfare beta, as you guys can see on screen right here. The specific classic weapons will be visible in the beta build. That is great news because now we're going to be able to confirm for a fact which weapons are coming back in Infinite Warfare and we don't have to rely on leaked information and sources. We're going to have concrete information and the cool thing is we're actually going to be able to see like the infographic for the weapons in the create a class menu which is really cool. I cannot wait to see weapons such as the ACR or the intervention back in a new game. So besides the information about classic weapons returning, we also got an article posted on Activision's website that talks about the things that we can expect to see in the beta next week. So the first thing that they talk about is they go in greater detail to explain combat rigs, and I'm going to do my best to explain it to you guys. So each combat rig is going to have a payload, which is similar to the specialist ability or weapon. It's something that charges throughout the game, very similar to the specialist in Black Ops 3, but they also have a trait. And the trait is cool because it's like a permanent perk that you get on top of your creative class selections. And it's a perk that's only going to be available to that specific combat rig that you choose. So for example, we're going to look at one of the three combat rigs that we're going to be able to use in the beta next week. We're going to look at Warfighter and he's got three different traits and you can pick one of these. So the first one is ping and it kills and assists. Send a ping that highlights nearby enemies, and this was a perk that was in Call of Duty Ghost if you guys played that game. It's very similar to that. The next trait is Persistence. Score streak counts, don't reset after death, but cost more so. That's going to be something that only this combat rig is going to be able to do. And then finally he has Resupply, which is pretty much Scavenger, and it says, Lethals and Tacticals can be resupplied by scavenging supplies from down foes which is really cool but it doesn't say that you get actual ammo so I'm kinda concerned whether or not you do get ammo if they left that out or if it's only for the lethal and tactical spots. And while we're already talking about the Warfighter combat rig we might as well talk about his payloads. His first one is Claw. It's a powerful spread shot weapon. It fires bullets that can ricochet around corners. That seems pretty cool. The next one is more like a specialist ability, it's combat focus, allows you to get double points for a limited time, getting you to that score streak even faster. Very similar to the combat focus that we had in Black Ops 3. And finally, we have Overdrive, which was a specialist ability in Black Ops 3 by Ruin, and it says Overdrive gives you a speed boost. So, I'm pretty sure all of you guys that have played Call of Duty games before are going to be very familiar with these setups, so let's go on to the next one. The next combat rig that we're going to be able to use is going to be Merc, and his payload is going to be Steel Dragon, a heavy beam weapon that can target multiple enemies, full charge, armored riot shield that destroys enemies as you charge, and then finally reactive armor, electromagnetically charged armor that shields you from fire, so that's very similar to the kinetic armor that we've seen from Battery in Black Ops 3. Now his three traits are Infusion, when triggered regenerates health quickly after taking damage, that's kind of like the ICU perk from Ghosts. Mana Arms, Heavy Weapons won't slow you down. You start with maximum ammo. That That's actually pretty good. So if you guys are going to be using an LMG, you always get a lot of ammo with it. But now you're going to be supplied with like having so much extra reserve ammo. And you don't have any movement speed penalty. That seems like a pretty good combat rig if you're a light machine gun player. And then finally, Shockwave, slam yourself into the ground and enemies with this devastating jump. So that's pretty much like the boost slam in Call of Duty Advanced Warfare. 
And then the final of the combat rigs that's going to be available in the beta, it's going to be Synaptic. And his payloads are Equalizer. It's a dual underarm machine gun with built-in suppressors for close quarters combat. That seems pretty cool. Rewind. It rewinds your position and replenishes health and ammo. So that's kind of like glitch if I'd say so myself. And then finally Reaper switches you into a four-legged rapid melee combat mode. And we've seen that in a lot of the gameplay early on. And then finally, we got traits, combat burst. After each kill, gain a boost of movement speed. We haven't really seen that in Call of Duty before as a perk, but that seems pretty cool. So if you're all about rushing, that's going to help you get around the map quicker and also get to objectives. Propulsion is a jump pack that recharges quickly and allows you to damage enemies underneath you with the blast from the jump pack. So that's kind of like afterburner, but it also damages enemies when you jump over them. So... That's pretty cool, especially if you guys are keen on using Afterburner, like I am in Black Ops 3. Once you use it, it's really hard to get used to the charge meter coming back without it. So for you guys that like to jump around and wall run and all that stuff, you're probably going to want to use that. And then finally, Rushdown allows you to dash in any horizontal direction. That's kind of like Advanced Warfare's movement where you can dash. Okay, so on to the next thing in this article. It says Mission Teams. Mission Teams bring a metagame to multiplayer in Call of Duty Infinite Warfare. By completing missions while enlisted in a team, you will earn a team rank. Complete those missions with honors and you will earn extra experience towards your rank. Each team has a unique commander who will deliver missions to you and comment on your success or failure. Ranking up will give you rewards from that team including calling cards, camos, emblems, unique rig cosmetics, as well as specific prototype weapons that are only available from that team. So this seems pretty cool because you now have an incentive to play these secondary game modes whereas before you don't get any kind of progression towards multiplayer or anything really beneficial except like a calling card or something like that which you do in this but the fact that you can get specific weapons, I think that'll really incentivize players to play these secondary game modes. So one question I have is, if you pick a team and you do all those missions, are you able to click on another team and then do all those so you can get every single weapon in the game? From the way this reads, it says that you spawn in with the JTF Wolverines and then later you unlock the Orion Initiative. So. I feel like you're going to be able to switch teams, I'm not 100% sure with the way this reads, but from what it sounds like, you will be able to choose each of the four teams when the game finally comes out. Next up in this article, it tells us which maps are going to be available for the beta. So the first map is going to be Frontier, it's a circular, two lane, fast paced map, which I'd probably say is going to be similar to Combine and the fact that that was also and the Black Ops 3 beta is a smaller map, fast paced, so that's going to be kind of like that map, but two lane to three lane, it might be slightly different, who knows. Next up, we have Frost, it's a linear three lane medium paced map, similar to what we've seen in Call of Duty Black Ops 3 and then all the Call of Duties before Ghosts. And then finally, we have Throwback, a bent three lane medium paced map, similar to Frost, so there we have all the maps. And then finally, it's going to tell us the game modes. So it says, fan favorite modes including team deathmatch, domination, and kill confirmed will be rotated throughout the beta along with some surprises like the new defender mode. So I'm not sure if it's just going to be one playlist like a mosh pit where it just does TDM, domination, and kill confirmed and it just rotates those. And then finally they're going to add defender a few days later kind of like they did with safeguard back in the black ops 3 beta so it says defender is a high stakes game of keep away your team must grab a drone and defend it gaining points while holding on and keeping it out of enemy hands teamwork is essential here in order to make sure your points add up until the drone resets and the cycle starts again and that's going to be the end of the article so if i have any final thoughts for you guys my one thing is i'm kind of concerned with how the uh, game mode rotation is going to play i wonder if it's going to be the team deathmatch domination and kill confirm playlist or if it's just going to be in one mosh pit playlist if it's one mosh pit playlist i'm a little concerned because most people that play call of duty you got to understand are casual players that only play tdm play for a few games and get off so if these people are going to be thrown into game modes such as domination and kill confirmed where there's an objective at hand, it might make for some rough lobbies where your teammates really don't have an idea of what's going on, so that kind of concerns me. And then I'm also wondering how many days before they add in Defender, or if they're going to do it right away. 
And finally, I'm so looking forward to seeing which classic weapons are coming back. I personally hope that the intervention's coming back. My favorite sniper of all time. Let me know down in the comments which weapons you guys want to see come back into Infinite Warfare. And then thank you guys so much for watching the video. If you guys are new, please hit the subscribe button down below so you don't miss any future videos of mine. Hit the like button if you did enjoy it. Until next time, we'll see ya. <laughs>